Geek Therapy Radio. Mental curator Johnny Hamburger showing you around this museum of the mind because we are all geeks about something. So I like to explore what all those somethings are. On the episode this week, we are going to be focusing on and debunking the conspiracy that 5G causes coronavirus. We are going to, I hesitate to use the word shatter, but science and fact is what it is. Science and fact does have a way of shattering these types of conspiracies. The idea that you can transmit a virus over electromagnetic radiation is absolutely absolutely bonkers. If we could do that, we would have Star Trek replicators. Uh, e equals MC squared. Einstein went over all of this a hundred years ago. Energy equals the mass times the speed of light squared. So to create a virus out of electromagnetic radiation would take un godly amounts of energy, let alone the low power radiation coming out of a 5G tower. But you know what? We'll talk about all this. I'm getting all fired up about this. Let's let science discuss this. Let's let scientists and doctors and professors debunk this, and that's just what we're going to do on this episode of Geek Therapy Radio. My first guest this week is Dr. David R. Jackson. He's a professor at the University of Houston's Department of Electrical and Computer Engineering, and he is going to kick things off here in our quest to debunk. And it seems it seems silly. Believe me, I know it seems silly that we even have to do this in the year 2020, but we are going to face this head on. I apologize for sounding so blasé about this, but this is a a broadcast. It's a little bit of my own editorializing, and 5G and coronavirus, it just seems so silly. But let's be scientific about it. To the chamber of science! Science, 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 science! I think we'll start the questioning here at the physical and biological foundations. Dr. Jackson, can the electromagnetic radiation coming from 5G towers have any effect at all on our biology? Hi, Johnny. Uh, Thanks for having me on your show. Glad to be here. Um, Any electromagnetic radiation will interact with human tissue. And one concern is just uh, the heating effect. The stronger the field is, the more the human tissue will heat up. Uh, Now, if the frequency gets high enough, we call it ionizing radiation, and that would be like x-rays or gamma rays or light waves. And uh, ionizing radiation has the potential to actually damage our DNA and and, and directly cause um, cancer. Uh, It's much more um, debatable what low-frequency waves can do. Uh, and, and, and by low frequency, that includes um, cell phone operation, including even 5G, even millimeter waves. Uh, at these kind of frequencies, may, people are mainly concerned about the heating effect. Um, there's not so much scientific evidence that, uh, that, that these, ra- these frequencies directly cause cancer. Um, it's, it's still not completely clear, but, but uh, I think mainly people are concerned just with the heating effect. Um, Typically, the heating effect is mainly going to come from your own um, phone that you're holding in your hand, your own handset, not really from the transmitting base stations. Uh, you know, a, tra- a transmitting base station may transmit with a fair amount of power, maybe 20 watts, for example, even up to 100 watts or more, uh, but the power falls off very, very quickly with distance. So if you're standing any kind of reasonable distance away on the ground, you're not going to be exposed to a very high level of fields. Uh, the phone that you hold in your hand may be very close to your head. And so that's actually more of a concern than what was coming out of the cell phone towers. Um, and that's, again, it's debatable whether that's really harmful or not, but it's probably uh, more risky than what's coming out of the base station towers. So, Dr. Jackson, can 5G network towers transmit and or worsen COVID-19? Can 5G networks transmit and are worsen COVID-19? <laughs> no, I don't think so. Uh, there's, there's no way the virus can actually uh, transmit over radio waves. So, 
uh, I think the answer to that is no. So again, doctor, is there even a remote, a remote grain of truth to the conspiracy that 5G networks spread coronavirus or even cause cancer? Well, definitely not uh, causing the coronavirus, that, that's for sure. Uh, and again, for causing cancer, I'd say most of the scientific evidence points to no. Um, at these frequencies, it's again, non-ionizing radiation, and it's the ionizing radiation that causes cancer. And that means, for example, sunlight or X, X-rays or gamma rays, uh, not these lower radio frequency waves. Um, again, let me emphasize that the main mechanism by which these low frequency waves can hurt you is if the intensity is so high that it heats you up, just like you're heating your food in the microwave oven. But you're not going to get that kind of exposure from the 5G network. So most people would say that, no, there's no risk from the 5G network. Um, we can't say with 100% certainty. Uh, there, again, there's some speculation that um, even these lower frequencies, even though they're non-ionizing, might have some non-thermal effects. But uh, it, it's sort of inconclusive. Uh, a simple answer is no. There, this 5G network is not harmful, does not cause cancer. Dr. Jackson, we've all heard of tinfoil hats, but... Should I actually weave a Faraday cage into my clothing? <laughs> uh, at these kind of frequencies that we use on the 5G network, uh, these waves will not penetrate conducting layers very well. Even a thin sheet of tin foil is almost a perfect shield against these kind of frequencies. So theoretically, if you made some kind of a suit made totally out of tin foil, uh, it would be a good shield, but uh, do you need to do that? No, that's ridiculous. Um, as I mentioned, at, at, at the power levels we're talking about, uh, there's no harmful effects that we know of from the 5G network. Uh, now, maybe if you're just standing a foot away from the transmitting antenna, that would be different. So don't go climbing up the tower and standing right next to the antenna. But except for that, if you're on the ground, you don't have anything to worry about. Um, you, you, you do have more to worry about. But like I said, from possible effects from your own cell phone in your hand, most people would still dismiss that as well. But if you are concerned about anything, I'd be concerned more about that rather than what's coming out of the network itself uh, coming out of the cell phone towers. Dr. David Jackson, thank you so much for coming on Geek Therapy Radio today to help clear up this 5G coronavirus conspiracy. Thank you very much. Bye bye. Again, my thanks to Dr. David R. Jackson for being so gracious with his time. Uh, up next, in the next segment of Geek Therapy Radio, we're going to talk to Professor Eric R. Bittner, also from the University of Houston. He is going to help us further debunk this 5G coronavirus conspiracy. More Geek Therapy Radio coming up. Don't go anywhere. Welcome back to Geek Therapy Radio. I'm your mental curator, Johnny Hemberger. All right, my next guest, Eric R. Bittner, is a fellow of the Royal Society of Chemistry. He is a theoretical chemist, physicist, and distinguished Morse professor of chemical physics at the University of Houston. So, Morse professors are distinguished tenured professors that have gone full supernova. They've also leveled up to God tier and have gone full Super Saiyan. His list of accolades and accomplishments would take too long to list in a one-hour radio show and would frankly turn our brains to soup. In other words... Wow. You're amazing, dude. Thanks. I like to play. Here's my conversation with Moore's professor, Eric Bittner. So let me put this into perspective. So I study light matter interactions with molecules. Okay. Okay. And and the energy range and, and the way that you get a, a photon, which is the quantum of light to interact with a molecular system is that that photon has to match an energy difference within a molecule for it to be absorbed mm -hmm. and to be absorbed and do a chemical reaction. Okay. Okay, which would be problematic, right? If you if you have light shining on you to cause a chemical reaction, right? That's not so good for you. In fact, you get this if you walk outside today, on a nice sunny day in Houston like today, you will get on the order of a billion chemical reactions occurring on your skin mm -hmm. from just sunlight. Yeah. Okay? And and you have pigment in your skin that gets dark. It's called a suntan, or maybe you get sunburned. Mm -hmm. And that is a uh, energy range that is. Um, 
uh, roughly uh, 10 to 100,000 times more energetic per photon than the photons that are being that, that are, are bouncing off of you from a 5G, you know, megahertz, uh, you know, 400 megahertz to uh, 90 gigahertz. Yeah. Uh, photon, and and so it doesn't matter how many of those photons you throw at you throw at somebody, if they don't match an energy difference of a molecule in your body, it doesn't matter. Mm-hmm. Okay, okay. It just, you know it's it, that's that's that, that's uh, that was the basis of uh, the, the photoelectric effect, going back a hundred years ago. It's essentially what Einstein won the Nobel Prize for. Yeah, uh, you know it doesn't matter it, until you get to that threshold where you can start ionizing. Uh, you're not going to cause any biological problems. And the other mm-hmm. thing is, um, a friend of mine at at, at Bell Labs, uh, John Tully, uh, a number of years ago, probably 20, 30 years ago, studied the propagation of cell phone mm-hmm. uh, uh, transmissions through basically human brains. Yeah. You know, they, they took models of human brains, uh, put jelly or whatever inside of it, skulls, and looked at propagation of cell signals. And mm-hmm. It, it, it's very, very weak. Mm-hmm. It, if there's any, you know, so you're, you're getting far more uh, problematic radiation from just holding your cell phone up to your ear. <laughs> right. <laughs> than from the, the uh, 5G network itself. Right. And so, um, yeah, I, I think that's like something that, that it sounds like new and scary and, and everything that's, oh, it's gigahertz. It, it's, you know, it's a higher frequency radiation, but it's still, it, it's okay. So this, again, to put it into perspective, the lowest energy quantum transition that a molecule might have in your mm-hmm. body mm-hmm. is is in the, the the like rocking motion of a water molecule uh, in, in, in of a water molecule. Mm-hmm. Okay, now your microwave oven does this. Yeah, but this is this is how your microwave oven heats things up. It bounces. It, it shines microwave radiation. Right, which is you know much, much higher energy radiation than, than this. This is millivolt, this is microvolt radiation compared to millivolt radiation mm-hmm. that, that comes out of your um, microwave oven. So you're probably more at danger from turning on your microwave oven making popcorn than from 5G network. Yeah. And, so, yeah. and yeah. It's back to um, holding the cell phone to your head, that's been a, yeah. that's been a point of contention for for decades, have they found conclusive evidence that it, it, hold, even holding a phone to your head is causing brain cancer or any adverse effects in the there, human body? So far as I know, there, there hasn't been any conclusive evidence. There's been a lot of like maybe anecdotal evidence, but there's nothing. There has not been a, uh, a a study that indicates. There's been a lot of studies that indicate that it doesn't. Right. But there hasn't been a study that indicates that there does. Right. So it's one of these like negative type studies, right? It's a negative result study. So it, it sounds silly to ask this but who knows there might be something there i don't see on any in any uh alternate universe where this could possibly work could 5g towers possibly through electromagnetic radiation spread a virus i mean a computer virus a uh, well you see yes a computer <laughs> virus yes but a biological virus. virus no no i mean it'd, no. Be, it'd, be, it'd be great if it would because that way that way you could like email me a glass of scotch right now because right. that would be totally awesome we'd have uh, replicators no. <laughs> like in star trek <laughs> we'd have replicators from star trek right now we wouldn't have to worry about like going to the grocery store we just have whole foods be me be me a plate of food right now right so that would be that would that's what we would have we would have replicators so uh, be t- <laughs> that, and i i watch tng yeah. every single night when I go to bed, so uh, mm-hmm. we could get off on a Star Trek tangent for hours, yeah. but let's keep it focused here. Yeah. <laughs> I, on Twitter, I I made the statement, and I believe it be, to be factually, you know, accurate that the only way a five G tower could spread coronavirus is if there was a giant pressurized aerosol canister of it spraying the area with actual virus and molecules and biological content. That's that's correct. Do you, yeah, that's correct. But the electro, <laughs> but the electromagnetic radiation has nope. nothing to do with it. Does the radiation it could it possibly even theoretically have anything to do with um, encouraging growth or separation or you know the cellular process of of, of a virus? And I, 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 I don't think there's ever been any studies that even indicate that like that uh, 
higher energy radiation would do that, or any radiation does the effect of maybe in, inducing mitosis or inducing a any sort of cellular division. I don't think there's any, there's, there's been a study that I mean certainly if you if you put ultraviolet radiation on a cell, it kills it. Right. Um, that's that that. But that's also radiation. It's a hundred thousand times more energetic than we're talking. And and also yeah. and, and thinking of of cancer treatments, radio you know radiology and, and cancer treatments. There, that's always mm-hmm. been and it still is inherently risky because what it's doing is killing anything mm-hmm. in the beam, including healthy cells. So even sure. so, even if a five G network was blasting out this uh, the five G radiation, whether it's four hundred fifty megahertz or, or twenty gigahertz, what have you, it's at such a low wattage in output that well it's, it's not the wattage it's, okay. it's the photon frequency mm, okay it's the what photon you're frequency because you, you can throw as many 5g photons at me as you want and right. none of them will interact with me yeah and, and okay, that's just the wrong energy it's just like you know here's if you can see my hand here right yes Okay, 5G is like right here. Yeah, I need this much energy to get a chemical reaction. If I yeah. don't have a photon of that energy, a hundred thousand of them aren't going to matter. It's just not going to react. I, I I can't do this. I can, I can only do this. I right. can't do this. Right. It, it's it's either mm-hmm. it's either or. It's all or nothing. All or nothing. So that's what quantum that's what quantum mechanics says. So so one of the main complaints I've had about 5G, the, the way I kind of uh, scratch my head about the technology, in particular the millimeter wave aspect of mm-hmm. 5G, is that it can't penetrate your hand, it can't go around a street corner, it can't penetrate glass. In mm-hmm. order for the millimeter wave aspect of 5G networks to work, you have to have a node basically every block and you would have to, and you have to be within line of sight. You have to be within a, a hundred feet of that node for it to even get to your phone. And if your if mm-hmm. your hand is over your phone, if you have a case, plastic case over your phone mm-hmm. between the antenna and the node, you can't get the data. So how would that possibly, even disregarding the fact that you cannot spread spread biological agents through <laughs> electromagnetic radiation, how could that possibly have any adverse effect on your body when the fog yeah. of the atmosphere would block that radiation. Sorry for getting all fired up yeah. about this, but it's, it's yeah, it seems true. peculiar <laughs> that we have to explain true. this in the year yeah. 2020. We'll leave the conversation with Professor Bittner there for just a moment until the next segment of Geek Therapy Radio. But yeah, it's nuts that in the year 2020, we have to explain to people that radio waves cannot transmit a virus. I know it's silly. More Geek Therapy Radio coming up. Don't go anywhere. Welcome back to Geek Therapy Radio. I am, of course, your mental curator, Johnny Hemberger. Um, You can find the Geek Therapy Radio podcast if you're just listening to the radio show right now. Just type in Geek Therapy Radio into your favorite podcast player, and it'll show up. Just look for the red, white, and black color scheme or any combination thereof. And that's it. That's Geek Therapy Radio. Also, the website, www.geektherapyradio.com. And you can always email me, geektherapy at iheartmedia.com. Also on YouTube, lots of cool content I put on my YouTube channel. Just type in Geek Therapy Radio into YouTube. There I am. Basically, just Google Geek Therapy Radio, really. Let's continue the conversation with Professor Bittner about 5G and coronavirus and how silly it is that we have to explain this in the year 2020. Yeah, yeah. No, you know, if you, yeah, exactly. It is, it is sort of um, shocking. You know, like I said, this is the stuff that, that Einstein won the Nobel Prize for 100 years ago. So we've so, known about this for 100 years. <laughs> so, so where do you think the confusion came from? Why do you think people are... I think I know the answer, but I want to hear your answer as well. Why do you think people are burning down 5G towers thinking that it's spreading coronavirus? Uh, I think it's just just uh, complete ignorance mm-hmm. and lack of scientific literacy that we have in our, you know, it's so surprising. We have this amazingly high-tech society, but we're yeah. amazingly unsophisticated in our language and understanding of technology. Yeah, um, I think which is very sad, and yeah. it's, it's because it's you know I mean I don't understand how my TV set works. 
I couldn't go out and build one. I trust that it works. <laughs> right. But the principles, but, um, but you, you've learned you know, the basic the principles. principles right. It works. Right. You yeah. can't, I can't build one in my garage either, but I under, I understand yeah. how transmission and, and EM yeah. works on a basic, basically enough so that I see that somebody on YouTube, a holistic doctor or whatever says 5G is spreading coronavirus. I'm thinking, you know what, with my sixth grade, you know, earth science knowledge, that doesn't stack up. So it's peculiar. It's always peculiar to me that someone could take hold of this. And the thing is, what's half as fascinating to me about this is I'm not saying that there aren't any reports from the United States that this is happening, but all the reports I'm seeing are from around the UK and even around the Netherlands and Northern Europe and elsewhere in the world. I haven't seen, I'm not doubting that there are, aren't, are but I haven't seen reports from people in the United States. And we've always complained, since we're from the United States, about right. our, our lacking public education system and, oh, this must be definitely happening, not to insult anybody from Florida. This must be a Florida man story. <laughs> but it's not. It's a sure, Netherlands, yeah. it's a Netherlands UK story. And perhaps it's happening in the United States. So it so I, I think I I mean I definitely agree with you that it it's it's born yeah. out of ignorance and and maybe Initially, because I think this all started from a, a viral video saying that, hey, they set up 5G in Wuhan, China, and that's where coronavirus is based out of. And I'm thinking, therefore, <laughs> and I'm thinking, Wuhan, China wasn't even the first to get 5G. We were setting up 5G here in Houston. We are setting up 5G in, in California and in, in, uh, in Rhode Island, I believe. There have been nodes of 5G that we've been testing for, for months, if not a year. We've been testing in the United States, as far as I know, way before Wuhan, China ever got it. Why would Wuhan, China be the first test bed versus somewhere like Los Angeles? There's just so many holes to poke to poke in this. Oh, yeah. And, yeah, and, yeah. I think it's, 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 you know, people are looking for an easy excuse. And this is a, uh, uh, you know, it's, it's an easy witch to burn if you want. Uh, you know, Peep. Um, I mean, it's like the homeopathic effect. You know, the, the, the homeopathic effect is very similar to this, right? It's a fringe mm -hmm. effect, if it's a, if it's an effect, and um, there's no science that backs it up. But people are fully willing to believe it, and, yeah. you know, because somebody says, "Hey, I saw this on the internet that, you know, that if I take uh, um, St. John's Wort and dilute it 500,000 times, mm -hmm. I get, you know, the same effect as if I ate the ate it." raw and it's completely wrong it, right um, it, it, that's, that's not the way chemistry works <laughs> no and, and i think conspiracies like this also propagate i, I just using this latest one 5g causing coronavirus it, it's taking you oh, so you've used a keyword 5g and you've taken a mm -hmm. keyword coronavirus two buzzwords two things that people yeah. are extremely already even the best educated of us are extremely confused about both for the uh, marketing techniques of the big telecoms and mm -hmm. this novel coronavirus that we're just trying to figure out a vaccine how to, how to fight this thing it's two things that we're confused about and, and trying to 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 be educated on come together mm -hmm. one guy says 5G causes coronavirus it gets however many hundreds of thousands of views on YouTube and there's this effect i think also that when you watch a video in this case on YouTube that says, oh, 100,000 people have watched this. This must be the gospel truth. If so many right. people are watching it, I don't want to be the odd man out who doesn't believe this. So I, I think there's kind sure. of this this mass uh, mass effect in a way of, I, I don't want to be excluded from this conspiracy. So I, I'm going to, at the best, I will say the jury's out. I will go against my best you know, interest and my best recollection of science from high school and I, I would I would rather be included <laughs> yeah, in this group than than go against my better judgment and assume otherwise I don't know it, it's it's so weird do you think that um, actually there's one question I want to ask before we get to the the final question here and again thank you for your time mm -hmm. is there any conceivable way that Man, it sounds so silly to ask. Is there any conceivable way to cause cancer with 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 cell phone towers? Like, what what would the perfect recipe you were mentioning earlier? What would the perfect recipe have to be, and and how would they do that under the radar without us noticing? You know, the human body does have electrical transmission. This is how we communicate with a lot. You know, our nerves work, right? Mm -hmm. your, your nerves do and are, are like 
electrical conduits. So it is possible if you had uh, radiation of the frequency that was corresponding to, um, and I don't have the numbers off the top of my head. Right. Um, I mean, we, you know, for example, at roughly your heartbeat, okay, let's say, for example, mm -hmm. uh, there is an electromagnetic wave that passes through your body due to the fact that you have a heartbeat. In fact, it's why you have a heartbeat is you have yeah. this electromagnetic wave that you're acting like an antenna. Now, right. If you had something that was resonant with that, let's call that um, two per second, mm -hmm. let's say, I think it's about the right. So this is not even, this is hertz. Right. This isn't megahertz. This is hertz. Just a resonant, okay. uh, resonant frequency. Right. Yeah. If you had something that's resonant with that, then it's possible you could you could induce people to have heart stopping <laughs> through an electromagnetic wave that one that would cause a you'd probably be arcing like crazy to do that my guess is that that, that there might be um I mean, this is this is the speculation part um you know long-term exposure to cell phone tires because they do have a lot of high voltage mm -hmm. to generate uh you do get a higher concentration of ozone Mm -hmm. around these towers and that's okay. simply due to the again your your ionizing radiation in in terms of the um the voltages that are used to generate these uh mm -hmm. intense radio, wave, radio waves and, and ozone is what you smell when you have a spark yeah or um and you can smell this if you drive underneath a uh, uh um a, a high tension wire for example sometimes you can smell the ozone yeah Okay. You can and, smell and, it in those ionizing, long, yeah. those ionizing yeah, air fresheners. And, you can smell it. For example. Yeah. And you know, an, an exposure to ozone isn't so good for you. Mm -hmm. uh, whether or not that's a cause of cancer or not is something I don't know. Uh, yeah. But it is, and it definitely would generate a lot of uh, oxygen-free radicals in your body, and, and so on. So that's that's, that's a possible. Um, yeah. But but the, the the frequency itself is not what would be causing the cancer. You know, yeah. it could also be things like, for example, um, exposure to the uh, 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 chemicals that are used in the insulation of the wires. It yeah. can be all sorts of different kind of things that just so happen to be associated with these towers. Yeah. But it's not the radiation that's causing it. It's something else. If there is a cause, it's not the radiation that's causing it. Right. But to our knowledge, otherwise you would have like you know you, you could you could draw so you could basically draw a circle around the tower and and say well everybody in this radius right here, you know why don't they all have leukemia, right, <laughs> <You know>? right, <laughs> or whatever, exactly. Um, that's the way radiation works. It that doesn't really care. It just boom right there. It, it just tapers off as you go farther and farther away. So there should be like a little gradient as I move away from every tower mm -hmm. of people around the tower that are sick, people who are away from the tower who are not. And if you don't see that. Right. You know, it's, it's just basic mathematics. Right. Uh, so to, yeah. to, to refocus it uh, one yeah. more time before the last question, the bottom line here is 5G data transmissions are not causing or spreading the corona virus. There's no conceivable way for that to happen. We'll pause uh, my conversation with Professor Bittner there one more time until the last segment coming up here on Geek Therapy Radio. The main takeaway, if, you, if just the average layman listener is listening to this and we're all laymen about something, just like we're all geeks about something, meaning we're highly interested in specific subjects and hobbies, a lot of us are laymen to everything else. No matter what you're into, I just want the takeaway from this to be think critically and ask a scientist if you can. With any of these types of rumors, let's just learn to think critically. More Geek Therapy Radio, don't go anywhere. Welcome back to Geek Therapy Radio. I'm your mental curator, Johnny Hamburger, showing you around this museum of our mind. And right now, the exhibit is Electromagnetic Radiation, the 5G Network, and how it correlates, or more effectively, does not correlate whatsoever to the spread of the coronavirus. Can I go to the 5G Network thing just for a moment? I, 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 we've been harping on on the coronavirus and the ignorance surrounding the coronavirus and the ignorance surrounding how viruses spread in that somehow it's taken root 
uh, among you know a few masses of people that you can that the 5G network is the root cause of coronavirus. I want to speak to that to, to to 5G for a moment. Part of the fault here, I believe, lies with the telecoms. And if you've listened to Geek Therapy Radio at all in the past regularly, you've heard me harp on 5G over and over again, not ad nauseum, but several times. It's been very confusing the way they have marketed 5G to us. All 5G means is we had the 3G network, 4G, 4G LTE in terms of how our mobile phones work, and now we have 5G. It just stands for the fifth generation of mobile broadband networks. But they did a very bad job with with how they market it to us. A lot of people confuse the 5G network with their 5 gigahertz Wi-Fi router. They think that it's just operating in the 5 gigahertz ra- uh, range. 5G, this is where the confusion comes in and why I don't comp- I, where I can understand where people get confused about this. It's it there's several wavelengths. There's several bands, there's several bandwidths being used all the way down to 450 megahertz. Uh, 600 megahertz, around 5 gigahertz, 2 gigahertz, up to 20 gigahertz, 90 gigahertz. It's all over the place. And when you start getting to the the, uh, gigahertz range, 5 gigahertz, 20 gigahertz, 90 gigahertz, that's called millimeter wave because the actual size of the radio wave is a millimeter. Not exactly a millimeter, but you get what I'm saying. It's tiny. CB radio, the, the wavelength of a CB radio, I think, is 39 feet in length. The length of a millimeter wave is is orders of magnitude smaller, and the smaller you make the wavelength, the harder it is for that wavelength to penetrate things. Think about bass, bass and music. When you walk up to a club and you hear the thump, thump, thump of the club two blocks away, and then you get in, you hear all the high frequency. All the high frequency sounds could not penetrate the walls or the thin door of that club, but you heard the penetrating powerful bass uh, through the walls from a long way away. That's the same way radio frequencies work. You can penetrate more objects with your 2 gigahertz Wi-Fi router. That's why your 2 gigahertz Wi-Fi works, you know, farther throughout the house versus your 5 gigahertz uh, Wi-Fi. You have to be within the same room or very close to the the 5 gigahertz router. Uh, The 5G network has nothing to do with your Wi-Fi. Like I mentioned before, it's 450 megahertz thereabouts, and then you have the in-between ranges, 2 gigahertz, 5 gigahertz, then you have all the way up to 20 to 90 gigahertz, which can't even penetrate water droplets in the air, water vapor in the air. It's all confusing, so I understand that aspect. I understand the confusion about this. We're also fighting a virus that we have no idea uh, how how to fight right now. We're still figuring out what is the best treatment method for it. Um, blood transfusions, uh, uh, different compounds that treat malaria. We're still trying to narrow it down. It's all very confusing. You pair two confusing things, the 5G network and coronavirus together, you get ridiculous rumors that 5G spreads the coronavirus. And that's what we're trying to shed light on uh, today. So we're going to continue the conversation. We're going to finish the conversation with pr- uh, Professor Eric Bittner from the University of Houston. And we rejoin the conversation talking about the irony that there are bigger threats in this world than the 5G network. That standing out in the sun is orders of magnitude, thousands, if not millions and billions of times more dangerous than standing next to a cell phone tower. So let's continue the conversation. As far as electromagnetic radiation, like you're saying, from the sun, the sun burns our skin. There's all sorts of there's bigger monsters out there that is supported by science. And even what you're saying that the way uh, the way a cell phone tower or electrical transmission line would cause cancer, it could be carcinogens. What you're saying in the shielding of the exactly. cables, in the in the build of it, it could, they could kind of spread out th- through the local neighborhood, what have you. But the actual broadcast of that data is it cannot. There are no studies to confirm that it hurts you, and it certainly is not causing a global pandemic. It's, and it's certainly not causing a global pandemic. And 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 given our our. Uh, uh, Current understanding of electromagnetic electromagnetism and physics, it is outside the realm of our best understanding of physics. Right, and, and we're always <laughs> it just doesn't happen. <laughs> and we're always we're, we're always learning. Maybe there'll be new studies that 
come to fruition in, in the next hundred years that might reveal some highly sort of unlike, highly unlikely right as far we, as trans- we, we we understand this realm of physics very very well right you cannot spread a <laughs> virus no <laughs> through electricity it can't right. or electromagnetic no. radiation i mean you know just this you know just even going back to again einstein so to make an atom out of light so yeah e equals mc squared right right, right. Speed of light's a big number. Yeah, the, it's a big number. <laughs> the, the energy, you know, you, the energy involved to convert matter to, to energy e equals mc squared. To make a virus out of electromagnetic huge. energy would take uh, many black holes worth of energy. Theoretically, it would, it would take like like yeah, exactly. It would take like all of the power consumption of the city of Houston for a year to right. make a virus or something like you know in that order. Like one uh, atom but, of of matter, something. It's, well, it's probably not that's not quite that much, but like it would certainly take a. Yeah, you know, we would have like a big brownout if we were trying to make a coronavirus molecule with photons. It would just and nobody's ever done that. Right. In your cell nobody yours in your no 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 that has never happened in a, in an experiment in a lab. No. And I don't foresee that happening. Uh you know, that uh, unless you're on like maybe Fermilab or something. Right. <laughs> maybe uh, that's uh, happened. I don't think that's happened even at Fermilab. I always bring it down to to basics and and follow the money and what incentive would the telecoms have to giving everybody cancer and viruses? Why would you want to kill the people that are paying bills? You can't get money. You, they can't pay the bills if they're dead, basically. That's true. Yeah. <laughs> or they're spending all their money on medical care, which is an, an entire different different story here that we won't. Yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 Get no, into. No. No. It's just, and also I like your question about everybody putting Faraday cages on. I, I, you know, we could all wear like chain mail or something. That might be sort of cool. It would be pretty cool if the current fashion trend was that we all wear chain mail. That would look pretty cool. Uh, my eternal thanks to Professor Eric Bittner for coming on to Geek Therapy Radio to help help us debunk this myth. I will, of course, if you get the podcast, if you're listening to this on the podcast, links below in the description. Always check the descriptions of my podcast. There's a lot of good stuff in there. I always I link to articles. I link to uh, sources down there. Cool things down there. Cool videos down there. The music bumps that I use usually are linked down there. Um, so my eternal thanks to Eric Bittner for coming on and also Dr. Jackson uh, for coming on with me today. I want to leave you with a synopsis from two scientists regarding the coronavirus and the 5G network spreading coronavirus. First, from Dr. David Jackson. So, Dr. Jackson, can 5G network towers transmit and or worsen COVID-19? Can 5G networks transmit and or worsen (laughs) COVID-19? No, I don't think so. Uh, There's there's no way the virus can actually uh, transmit over radio waves, so... (laughs) Uh, I think the answer to that is no. And again, the same question to Professor Bittner. 5G data transmissions are not causing or spreading the coronavirus. There's no conceivable way for that to happen. In the fact remains that I can pull from a pool of thousands, hundreds of thousands, millions of scientists who would confirm the same. 5G cannot give you coronavirus. Thank you so much from the bottom of my heart for listening to Geek Therapy Radio. Like I tell you every week in every podcast, know that you are worthy of love, both giving and receiving love, and you are also worthy of your own self-worth. Please know that. Please know that. Thank you for listening. Visit my friends at Best Automotive in Kingwood on North Park. If you like the Geek Therapy Radio podcast, I would adore if you share it with your friends. Thank you so much for listening.